2022 has been an insane year for movies. And I mean, don't get me wrong, there has been some less than satisfactory movies that have come out this year, but hey, 2022 was still a great year for movies all around. So to celebrate the new year, I thought it would be kind of a fun experience to go through every major movie that came out this year, which I watched and review each one of them. Starting off with... So for January, the only movie I actually watched was Hotel Transylvania 4. Yeah, uh, anyone remember this movie? This movie exists. That's about it. It got delayed like 500 different times due to Sony trying to sell the rights to various streaming services. The movie itself wasn't even that good. I mean, I myself am not the biggest Hotel Transylvania fan, but hey, the first and second movie were pretty good. But throughout this movie, I just kind of had no emotion watching it. The story wasn't that good, it was just kind of weak, so I wasn't missing out on a lot to begin with. Also, ninjas in this movie. Die in a fucking fire. 4 out of 10. For February, I watched two movies, Uncharted and this one. I don't even want to say the name of this movie. Let's begin with Uncharted. Honestly, this movie had a lot of potential, but it all got kind of wasted and I'm just disappointed with it. They have Tom Holland and Mark Wahlberg, which I mean, they're pretty good actors in their own separate movies. But Tom Holland as Nathan Drake is just not it, pal. He's You're not, not that, that guy. guy. It feels like they just casted Tom Holland for the sake of casting Tom Holland. I mean, he looks nothing like Nathan Drake from the games. The story was kind of mediocre. The pacing was weird. The ending scene had a pretty cool set piece at least. And I mean, that's it. Honestly, this movie movie's not all that bad, you can still get some enjoyment out of it, it was just a bit disappointing. 6 out of 10. Moving on to Pinocchio A True Story. This is very suspicious. So Pinocchio A True Story is one of the three Pinocchio movies that came out this year and is honestly hot garbage. The only reason why I even wanted to watch this in the first place was to make a video on it which I later scrapped. But to summarize it, when voice acting whack, be on my own. <laughs> story whack, animation whack, trash movie. I could go more in depth as to why this movie was was complete trash but honestly there's no point just watch it and see for yourself 1.5 out of 10 So for March, I watched three movies, Turning Red, The Batman, and Everything Everywhere All at Once. Starting with Turning Red, I still think that this movie is pretty good. I feel like it was a big risk for Pixar of all companies to make because of how much shirt was compared to other Pixar movies. Once again, this movie stands the test of time. 7.5 out of 10, good job. Next movie, The Batman. Now, this is an absolute banger of a movie. When we all heard that Batman was going to be played by Robert Pattinson, everyone just kind of questioned the casting choice as we were basically going to be getting an emo Batman. You're like... And I guess who I am. Vengeance. But my god, does he pull it off. In this movie, we get a younger Batman who is still trying to figure out the ways of, well, becoming Batman. Like, he has his cool gadget and stuff, but he still makes mistakes and is generally less experienced. Which I thought was a great idea for the movie because it shows that at the end of the day, Batman is human. The villains also absolutely killed it in this movie. I love Paul Dano very much. His portrayal as Riddler in this movie is just straight up insane. What is going on, guys? It's your boy Riddler here. I mean, he was like Jigsaw from Sonic. He had all these cool and violent traps and elaborate puzzles for Batman to solve. And also, people die in very gruesome ways. This movie is just overall very good. Keep it up, Matt Reeves. 9 out of 10. Everything, everywhere, all at once. Honestly, what a fitting title. This movie is just outright insane. It feels like a bit straight out of Rick and Morty, but extended to a whole movie. Not to mention that this entire movie felt like a giant acid trip. It's pretty much about this woman who is apparently the chosen one and must jump through the multiverse to save everyone. Not to mention that apparently the editing and VFX on this movie was done entirely by five people who just watched the YouTube tutorials. The main message of this movie is basically just be kind and honestly amidst the chaos in this movie this is such a great and simple message. Highly recommend. 8 out of 10. For April, I watched two movies, Sonic 2 and The Bad Guys. Let's start with Sonic 2. Whoa, oh no, is, is that James Marsden? No, 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 not again. No, no, no! <coughs> I personally wasn't expecting a lot from Sonic 2. I watched the first one when it came out and it was actually kind of good. And this one is probably still on the same level as that movie, except maybe a tiny bit better. Jim Carrey obviously still carries this movie. I mean, this guy's a legendary actor, okay? We need to protect him at all costs. Tails and Knuckles were also pretty enjoyable to watch and they're 
their characters stayed pretty loyal to their actual personalities. They felt genuine. And although I don't think this movie was very groundbreaking or anything, it wasn't that bad either. 7 out of 10. Moving on to the bad guys. This was definitely a big surprise to me because out of all movie studios to make a movie like this, it was DreamWorks. And I mean, with DreamWorks movies, it's pretty much always a hit or miss. They can either put out a work of art or complete rubbish. This movie, though, is different. It's a fast-paced action heist movie. I found the heist scenes pretty cool. They kind of reminded me of the Ocean's Eleven movies. The art style is also the icing on the cake as well as the fluid animations. The story isn't really too deep either to the point where someone with room temperature IQ can understand it. It's just an overall fun movie to watch if you just want to turn your brain off for an hour. Also, The Wolf is Hot. 8 out of 10. For the month of May, I watched four movies. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, Marmaduke, Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers, and Top Gun Maverick. First off, Doctor Strange. This movie kind of left me disappointed because I had high hopes for what they were going to include in it. They could have literally included any Marvel character since we know that the multiverse exists. And I feel like they should have taken advantage of that fact more. We could have met Miles Morales or the entire Fantastic Four, not just Reed Richards. They could have even brought back the three Spider-Men or more X-Men characters. They had the opportunity. They should have just went crazy. Go Stupid. The movie itself was sadly kind of boring. There's a lot more horror elements in this movie and blood and gore, which I thought was super fun. There's a scene where the main villain literally just brutally murders everyone in the room. Anyways, yeah, this movie is pretty weird, but ultimately it was just kind of bad. It's morbid time. Five out of ten. Marmaduke. I mean... It's a movie, I can say that for sure. Let's just say this is not a very good movie. Just why? Why do the models look like this? Why was this movie even made? This is what you call the peak Pixar mom model right here. This movie is pretty much on the same level as Pinocchio, a true story. Everything about it is pretty garbage. 1.5 out of 10. Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers. I mean, it was entertaining to say the least. This movie was honestly not that bad. The one main problem I have with this movie is that it doesn't really have anything to do with Chip and Dale because they weren't even the main part of the story. This movie takes place in a world where cartoon characters are just actors and so a few of them go missing and Chip and Dale have to investigate it, but they were easily very replaceable. You could replace Chip and Dale with like Looney Tunes or Disney characters and it would still be the same plot. I mean, at least they have Ugly Sonic. Meow. 6.5 out of 10. Next up, Top Gun Maverick. This is such a good movie. It was pretty entertaining from start to finish and the final fight scene was just perfect. Coming from someone who's never seen the first Top Gun movie, everything was still super enjoyable from the get-go. I can't really name anything bad about this movie either. The final fight is easily the best part. It was so intense and definitely had a great payoff in the end. Overall, great movie. I cannot express that enough. 9 out of 10. For the month of June, I watched Lightyear. Yay. Lightyear is a movie about this guy and uh goes to space. I think this guy was also part of like some other big franchise or something. I don't know. I can't be bothered to remember. Listen, okay? Bottom line is this movie's not very good. If you want my thoughts on it, then you can go watch the ranking Pixar movie. But for now, just watch Interstellar instead. 5 out of 10. For July, I watched Minions Rise of Gru, Thor Love and Thunder, Nope, and Super Pets. Starting off strong with Minions 2, I actually had a good time watching this movie. The Minions in this movie were less annoying and actually sort of had a purpose rather than just being the annoying merchandisable sidekicks they are in most other movies. This movie is also 10 times better than the first Minions movie because the plot is actually interesting. It's not just a one hour compilation of funny Minion memes. The Minions and Gru had a lot of good chemistry together and the whole plot of Gru wanting to be a super villain was okay, I guess. These villains were were just kind of boring. I feel like Despicable Me villains are just getting worse every passing movie. This movie just made me feel like I took El Macho and Evil Brad for granted. Also, the soundtrack is very good. 7 out of 10. Next up, Thor Love and Thunder. Yeah, this movie is a big mess. My biggest problem with this movie is not the boring story or the questionable CGI, but simply put, this movie is just not funny. I feel like Taika Waititi tried way too hard with the jokes on this movie and all of them just don't really land at all. One good thing that I can say is that I at least liked the villain. He was a lot more enjoyable than Thor for some reason and I was kind of rooting for him to win in the end and just kill Thor or something. And I'm not just saying that because he's being played by Christian Bale, you know, the funny literally me guy. I just really liked the acting and the performance. Overall, this movie was just a mess. 4.5 out of 10. Next up, Nope. Now, if you know me, I am not the biggest horror movie fan or simply horror in general. But for some reason, I got curious and decided to watch this movie and my god, this movie is absolutely terrifying. Every scene with a UFO is so unnerving and tense that it has you on the edge of your seat the entire movie. There were also like two jump scares in this movie, which would probably put a Victorian child into cardiac arrest. Overall, did I have fun watching this movie? Yes. Will I watch it again in the future? 
Absolutely f***ing not. 8.5 out of 10. Moving on to DC Super Pets. What even was this movie? This movie was honestly one of the weirdest ones to come out this year, but it's actually kind of good at the same time. Yeah, I have no idea what this movie even was. I didn't really like the plot too much, but the jokes in this movie are actually surreal. They literally swear in the movie. No, seriously, what just happened? I can't see But I still can't see Where the am I? No more saying cuss words, guys! The humor in this movie was just great overall. It's one of the things that I really enjoyed. It's very meta and doesn't take itself seriously at all. Also, for some reason, this movie has a stacked cast. Dwayne The Rock Johnson as Crypto, Kevin Hart as Ace, John Krasinski as Superman, and my favorite, Keanu Reeves as Batman. You're breathtaking! Also, one thing I found funny was this movie somehow ranked higher in IMDb than both Thor and Doctor Strange. Talk about Marvel falling off. 8 out of 10. For August, I watched two movies, Bullet Train and Luck. Starting off with Bullet Train, this right here is a fantastic movie. I enjoyed everything about this. The humor is great, the action is very violent and fast-paced. The plot of this movie is pretty much that there are these assassins on a bullet train in Tokyo that are all trying to retrieve one briefcase. It's also chaotic as well with each character having their own introductions and backstory. Like someone would say or mention an event and it would then show said event like some sort of family guy cutaway. I feel like you could also benefit from watching this movie twice knowing all of the plot twists and stuff because you could just appreciate how literally all of the characters are connected 9 out of 10 next up is luck honestly it wasn't as bad as i thought it was going to be it honestly felt like this movie was completely written by an ai because for some reason it was the most average pixar clone i've ever seen all down to the art style and everything the world building was pretty cool at least i enjoyed the whole luck dimension they had going on all in all this was kind of a mid movie but it's not entirely horrible 6.5 out of 10 During the month of September, I watched the Disney Plus Pinocchio movie, and my god, did I absolutely hate it. This is the most forgettable and mid movie. It is completely passionless and emotionless. Also, like, nobody asked for a Pinocchio live action remake. This movie just kind of felt like Disney had no ideas and just made it as filler without trying at all. Pinocchio also literally defies physics and becomes a superhero. Superhero landing! This scene right here is actually Pinocchio's debut to the MCU. 5.5 out of 10. In October, I watched Black Adam, and oh boy, was it mediocre. It definitely felt more like a Marvel movie in a way, because it wasn't too dark like most other DC movies, but it just kind of felt flat and empty. I will give it credit though, this movie wasn't actually that bad. The plot was still somewhat entertaining despite being very predictable. There's also a Superman cameo in this movie, which is pretty sad knowing this is the very last time Henry Cavill will ever play Superman. But hey, at least this movie wasn't as bad as the posters. What the hell is even that? 6 out of 10. For the month of November, I watched Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, and Strange World. First off, Black Panther. Another mediocre superhero movie, yay! The start of this movie was kind of boring, I'll admit. The pacing was kind of slow until we get to like halfway into the movie when the main villain is introduced. I literally almost fell asleep in the movie theater like twice. I will say that this is probably the best Marvel movie of this year, which is pretty sad considering this movie wasn't even that good. 6 out of 10. Next up is Strange World. Weirdly enough, I thought that this movie was sort of good. It had a really promising start and had a great premise, but it kind of just undelivered on everything afterwards. The main complaint I have is that the world building is just so uninteresting. The strange world that they supposedly explore is so bland and boring, which sucked because most of the movie was spent there. Although there are some aspects which I enjoyed, like the adventure theme, which kind of reminded me of Indiana Jones, and the message of this movie is just so generic. It's literally just be yourself, follow your dreams. Turn existing characters into marketable plushies, 6 out of 10. In December, I watched the Disney Plus Roderick Rules and Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. Let's begin with the Roderick Rules Disney Plus movie. Yeah, it was kinda awful. This movie does not do Roderick Rules justice. It changes a lot of stuff from the books in a way that just makes this movie boring to sit through. It's not necessarily horrible at least, I just don't see why anyone would be watching this movie when you could just be watching the original. 6.5 out of 10. And finally, to end this year off, we have Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready because the greatest Pinocchio movie has just arrived at our doorstep. This 
movie actually had emotion, which was really shocking to me after watching the other two Pinocchio movies, which had literally zero emotion whatsoever. A lot of care was put into this movie, and it really, really shows, especially in the animation department. One thing I really liked about this movie was that instead of taking away elements from the core Pinocchio story like the other two movies did, this movie instead adds onto the story of Pinocchio with more backstory and character development. Also, this movie takes place during the time of fascist Italy, which was a surprisingly very fitting addition for some reason. All of the war elements in this movie just make it feel so much more impactful and emotional. And honestly, after watching two of the worst Pinocchio movies this year, this was literally exactly what I needed to end everything off with. 10 out of 10, well deserved. Okay, enough chit chat. Time to rank the best and worst movies. The top 5 best movies, in my opinion, go to... Number 5, Everything Everywhere All At Once. Number 4, Bullet Train. Number 3, Top Gun Maverick. Number 2, The Batman. And finally, the award for number 1 best movie of this year goes to... Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. Yes, this is not a joke. I'm actually crowning this as the best movie of 2022. Please do not cyber bully me in the comments. And now to give the award to the worst movie of 2022. Drum roll, please. Pinocchio A True Story and Marmaduke, which were both so equally bad I genuinely could not decide which was worse. Congratulations on all the awards, thank you very much. If I had to describe 2022's movies in one word, it would probably be... monotonous. I mean, most of the movies on this list were just kind of mid-movies with not really anything too special with a couple of good movies sprinkled in there. I know that I've probably missed a bunch of movies that came out this year, but that's okay because none of them were ever important in the first place and are all complete garbage. Yo, Chase, you missed the movie. Uh, what? What movie? Morbius. <laughs>